Hey, what's up everybody? Hey, MP here. And today I wanted to take a look at the template tag that we use in web components to give our users uh, extreme customization over our Shadow DOM. And a little, uh, little sprinkling of syntactical sugar uh, that we're adding to, that I'm proposing that we add to PFE Element that makes uh, working with these templates a little bit easy for our developers. Um, so what am I talking about here? Um, let's take an example of how we can use template tags to override for uh, the Shadow DOM. So starting starting first. Um, here we have PFE clipboard, simple little um, copy to clipboard functionality that we're turning into a web component. So what we try to do with PFE is um, we start out with some really sane defaults. So what's the easiest implementation for this tag that we want to present our users? Um, just so it's not overly complicated to get these to easily use our components. So that really starts with the most simple example of I put a tag on the page. What is it going to do? Um, and it looks like I need to update my demo here. These are not with notifications. These are apps actually just I copy I, I click copy maybe some check text changes and that's it. Um, so Whenever you're developing these components, you of course want to give your users access, the ability to override some stuff. So if we take a look at the demo, we can see what we're giving the ability to update. So we have just the default. The default is this experience. That's exactly what you're going to get um, by putting that on the page. Now, what if you want hidden icons? Well, you can easily change that with a Boolean uh, attribute value. Uh, what if I want to change the icon itself? Well, that's where something like slots come in, um, where you can put anything that you want into this one area. Um, we provide, like I said, same default. So out of the box, we're going to provide you with a fallback SVG if you don't provide one, um, just so that you don't have to jump through a whole lot of hoops to get this on the page. And then we come to something a little bit more advanced, which is uh, notifications which let me make sure that this demo is updated with notifications, notifications. Let's see if that fixes it. It's always spelling, right? Okay. So there you see that, hey, we've allowed our users to actually opt into some advanced functionality, functionality and that is a toast uh, notification pops up. Toast is already in our library. It kind of makes sense that we give some uh, enhancement uh, that incorporates some other elements that we already have in our uh, design library. Uh, so then the question comes, well, what if I want to really customize that? Well, like I said, you know, you can obviously use slots. So we can provide um, some slots for you to update not just the text of um, the success so this state right here making some copies um, you can also override the text that's in the notification so here we're saying my custom notification you can see that whenever I click it and let's see was that the right demo should have had these demos really nailed down uh, da -da -da -da. probably a naming thing let's just skip that um pretend that pretend that that just worked because it always had until i did this demo right now um but let's say that you want something a little bit more advanced than just overriding those little areas what if i want to override the entire notification um template so this is something where templates uh can come into play um where you can provide inside of your web component, you can say, hey, I know that in your Shadow DOM, you have this template for notifications that has all this HTML in it. Um, I'm gonna provide my own template for you to use. Um, it's not gonna be in a slot. It's, you're gonna treat it just like it was in your Shadow DOM, in your Shadow Root. Um, and that really provides some uh, uh, extraordinary, extraordinary amount extraordinary amount of flexibility so the idea is that in your shadow root you have provided a, a default so in this case our notification template looks exactly like this okay um, it's using a toast that has all these options 
I my web component is going to use that. But first, it's going to check to see if you have this template in here. And if you have the template, I'm actually going to use your user provided one first. So how does it do that? Let's look at the code a little bit. And we're going to go down to toggle toast notification. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to run this this dot get template and then it's going to um, uh, just put a, a, a selector in there for what the template ID is. So if you look at that ID, here it is in our shadow DOM. And then here it also is in our light DOM. Okay, so this is our user provided template. So what is this dot get template? It's a really simple uh, method that um, could go on uh, PFU element, and that's what I'm going to be putting an issue into the issue queue for to for it to be considered. Just a really nice way for you as a developer to say, I'm going to um, uh, provide my users the ability to, to define a template, and I'm just going to say, use the exact same query selector that is in the shadow root in your light DOM that exists in the shadow root, use that same selector in your light DOM if you would like to override it. And what this method is going to do is, is it's going to check to see if that exists in the light DOM first. If it does, it's gonna use that. If not, it's going to fall back to whatever the developer um, has provided in, um, in the shadow DOM. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, this dot get template, um, you know, it's it's not much, but hey, it's a little nice little development, uh, uh, little bit of syntactical sugar that you don't want to just do write that logic all the time. So then after we've used get template, we know that we have either the user defined template or the fallback template. It doesn't matter. Once we get to this stage, we're going to treat it exactly the same. We're going to uh, clone that template in so that we're going to turn it into actual DOM to work with. Uh, we're going to inject it into our shadow root, and then we're going to actually toggle the toast notification. And what that does is it gives the, gives you the ability to override uh, anything you want on the notification. So here we have PFE toast, auto dismiss. I'm going to, uh, as you can see, it's set to eight seconds. If there were other settings on here, we could override them. So uh, yeah, that's uh, providing fallbacks using the template tag. Um, and hopefully we can get that method uh, into the base class. I just think it's uh, it could be a nice little addition. Nothing much, but uh, prove the developer experience a little bit. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll check you later.